Yo guys, what is up? It is Nick. We are back for the final uh, section of the bracket uh, for the bracket breakdown, giving it a little bit of my thoughts on each of the matchups that I have. Um, take 10 years to do every matchup possible, so we're just going to do the ones that I have. Oregon and Oklahoma might as well just go ahead and move on, and we'll start out with St. Joe's Cincinnati. Uh, St. Joe's has a lot better. Once again, the RPI for St. Joe's, similar to the BPI, of Cincinnati, both lower and then a little bit higher end, both at 44 for RPI, BPI, you know what I mean. Uh, St. Joe's 2-1 and one against the top 25, very good win-loss against the top 25. Cincinnati 1-3, and three. Uh, similar conference records. They score, um, well, St. Joe's um, allows about 7 more points, than, or exactly 7 more points than Cincinnati, and Cincinnati scores about 4 less points than St. Joe's. Um, last four games, there were both eight and four. Uh, St. Joe's lost by 14 to Villanova. They beat Dayton twice. Um, I believe that would be their two top 25 wins. Uh, St. Bonaventure, they be, they lost twice to St. Bonaventure. They split with VCU, lost to Florida by level 11, and beat Temple by one. Uh, Cincinnati split with SMU, lost to Xavier by 10, lost to Iowa State by two, uh, beat VCU, uh, lost to Butler, uh, went 2 of 3 against UConn, losing the biggest one in the tournament. Uh, they lost twice to Temple, and they split with Tulsa. Uh, so in this matchup, um, I really just like St. Joe's over Cincinnati. I don't have much of a reason other than I just liked how I saw St. Joe's play. They're coming off their tournament. I did not like how Cincinnati played against UConn. They could have put them away multiple times, and they couldn't do it. Uh, but moving on to Bail Baylor and... I just combined their names to be Bale. Baylor and Yale. Yale has a nice uh, RPM BPI. Um, not uh, not half bad uh, for a team um, out of the Ivy League, similar to a Harvard, when Harvard was uh, pretty low in the BPI and the RPI... Pre yeah, pretty low in the BPI and RPI, too. Um, they were 0-2 against the top 25. Uh, they average... A little bit less points than Baylor, but they uh, they give up six less points per, per game. Baylor went 2-9 and nine against the top 25, making nine of their 11 losses to top 25 teams. Um, down the stretch, Yale went 11-1, and one, went 13-1 and one in conference play. Baylor 5-7. and seven. Uh, Baylor um, lost to Kansas three times, lost to Oregon, beat Iowa State twice, uh, went 2-3 for three against Texas, Oklahoma beat them twice, West Virginia beat them twice, and they split with Tech. Uh, SMU, um, they, DL played a close game with SMU. They got kind of blasted by it. Duke. They lost a game at USC, and they split with Princeton. So their one loss in conference was to Princeton. Um, I like Yale. I like them against Baylor, but uh, not enough to take them. We move on to UNC Wilmington against Duke. Duke has a very good BPI rank, a little higher than I thought it would be. Same with their RPI. It's a little bit higher than I thought. They went 4-5 and five against the top 25. UNC Wilmington didn't play a team in the top 25. They went 14-4 and four in conference, have a 25-7 record overall. So notable, uh, UNC Wilmington, 2-3 for three against Hofstra. That's all we've got from them, which means they didn't play many good teams, uh, which is making me rethink this whole they're going to beat Duke thing. Um, Virginia, Miami, um, they beat Virginia, Duke beat Virginia, they lost to Miami, split with North Carolina, lost to Utah, split with Louisville, lost to Kentucky, beat Indiana by 20, and somehow lost to Notre Dame twice. Uh, they blew that game in the ACC tournament. That's all I got to say about Duke. So I'm going to have Baylor beating Duke, whether Duke beats UNC Wilmington or not. So this is where you have your fun. Take that UNC Wilmington to match up with the Baylor Bears. Uh, down here, Northern Iowa and Texas. I have completely flown off of Texas and on to Northern Iowa in this game. Northern Iowa an 11 seed, 22 and 12, not as good as you would hope going 11 and 7 in conference, but 2 and 0 against the top 25. Keep that in mind. Um, they hold their opponents to 62 points per game, score 68, 11-1 down the stretch, though. It means they struggled early, and they figured it out. Beating North Carolina, Iowa State, going 2 out of 3 against Wichita State, 
that a loss to Hawaii still makes me scratch my head. Uh, Texas, though, also beat North Carolina. Uh, they split with Oklahoma. They beat West Virginia twice, lost to Kansas twice, lost Texas A&M, uh, split with Iowa State, and went 1-4-3 against Baylor. So we are going to be taking Northern Iowa in this game. And we move on to my favorite game. I cannot wait for this game on 318. When is 318? Is my phone going to tell me what the day is? 14th, so Tuesday, Wednesday. Th so it's a Friday game at 720. Green Bay, Texas A&M, Carrington Love. Probably going to be guarded by Caruso. Um, not that great in conference, but 9-3 and three down the stretch. 8-4 and four for Texas A&M after that midseason struggle. Win 8-4 and four down the stretch, not bad. Uh, Green Bay had a close loss to Wisconsin. They beat Akron, and they went only 1-4-3 against Valpo. Uh, Valpo had a very good season. Um, Kentucky for Texas A&M, they split. They beat Baylor by 19. They beat Iowa State. They beat Texas. They lost to Syracuse. Um, they lost to South Carolina. They beat Georgia by one, and they beat Florida twice. I don't care about that. We're taking carrying to the love and Green Bay to beat uh, Texas A&M, setting up the biggest... Um, the highest seed matchup, a 25. You can only possibly get a max of, uh, what'd be the, what be the highest? A 16 and a 15, that's a 31, that's the highest. So 25, pretty high, in my opinion, between Green Bay and Northern Iowa. We move on to the final first round matchup in Oregon State versus VCU. Uh, VCU and uh, Oregon State have a similar RPI. Uh, the BPI does not like Oregon State as 61 compared to VCU's 25. Um, 3 and 5 against the top 25 for Oregon State. 1 and 2 for VCU. Um, Oregon State likes to win a lot of close games, um, 72 to 70. VCU has a much larger um, uh, separation between theirs and their opponent's point per game. Uh, Havoc defense, they both have a similar record down the stretch. Uh, Oregon State split with Oregon. Uh, they lost to Kansas. Uh, they split with Utah. Went one for three against Cal. Uh, they lost to Arizona. They split with Colorado. They split with U.S. They split with a bunch of people. They blasted Iona, and they lost to Valpo. Kind of that big old blemish on Oregon State's. Even though Valpo did have a great year, that is the big blemish on Oregon State's resume. Uh, VCU lost to Duke. They lost to Dayton by just one. They split with St. Joe's. They beat St. Bonaventure. They lost by only one to Wisconsin. They lost by six to Cincinnati. If um, a couple of those games swing the other way, VCU could be a six seed probably. Um, those real close games, losing by one, or yeah, by to both Dayton and Wisconsin, kind of some big losses. Um, and I still, someone's gonna have to give me some reason to go against Gary Payton the second in Oregon State. I think Gary Payton II just wills them by VCU. I've only got to see him play twice, but I did like what I saw out of Gary Payton II. Uh, and so we move on to the round of 32. Four matchups, starting out with Oregon and St. Joe's. We'll take a quick peek at Oregon here. 28-6 uh, overall, 10-2 and two down the stretch, 14-4 and four in conference. Number two in the, B, in the RPI, number 17 in the BPI. Um... They have about a nine-point differential. So does St. Joe's, though. Uh, but the major keys for Oregon, they won three against uh, Utah, split with Cal, uh, beat Arizona twice, beat Baylor, split with Oregon State, split with Colorado, and beat USC twice. I uh, believe Oregon um, well-deserved a one seed. I believe Michigan State should have been a one seed over Virginia because what that tells me is that ACC championship game meant nothing except that North Carolina got to hoist the trophy, and uh, Virginia didn't, because Virginia still got a one seed above Oregon, won the Pac-12 regular season and the tournament title. Michigan State, who came in second in the regular season and first and won the tournament, it doesn't, it just still doesn't make much sense to me. But we're going to take Oregon over St. Joe's, and then we have Baylor, UNC, Wilmington. Um, UNC, Wilmington is just there because we're picking Baylor, and I'm picking UNC, Wilmington as a possible upset because they're they're from North Carolina, Duke, and Carolina. Um, I don't know, maybe those kids have a chip on their shoulder and they get it done. That's all that's all I got for you. Green Bay, Northern Iowa. Taking them again. Carrington Love and Green Bay all the way to the sweet sixteen. 
I, I think this is going to be my pick. I, I think I'm moving the 14 seed Green Bay to the Sweet 16. I have a few days to finally to finalize this, but that may be a lock. That may be that may be the lock. Green Bay, Carrington Love, Sweet 16. Uh, Oregon State, Oklahoma. We can take a look at Oklahoma. Number six in the RPI and number six in the BPI. The first team to actually be the same rating in both, I think, that I've looked at. Um, they are 7-4 against the top 25, which is pretty good. Um, losses come in twice to Kansas, once to Texas, and once to, uh, to, to West Virginia, I believe. Is that how that went? Uh, they went 12-6 against the conference. Only 7-5 down the stretch. If you think about that, they were 8 and two when they were number one in the country uh, but Villanova huge win over Villanova lost to Kansas twice two off of West Virginia two off of Iowa State two of three I guess I should say that split with Texas beat Baylor twice and just manhandled Wisconsin by 17 uh, Oklahoma probably the team behind Villanova that I want to win this thing the most I want Buddy Heald to go out uh one buddy healed to go out with the W with the national championship and player of the year. Be cool. Um, I, I don't know. I just enjoy watching buddy healed. So Oklahoma going over green Bay, Oregon over Baylor, which sets up a one V two matchup. I think this is our, this is our second one, uh, setting up Oregon, uh, against Oklahoma. And I got Oklahoma in this matchup, taking down the ducks. Um, it's a really tough matchup. I wish Virginia would have been with, Oregon, uh, or, or Virginia would have been with Oklahoma, because I, because I, I, want, I want Oregon and Oklahoma in the Final Four, but can't do that. So we got Oklahoma, Kansas, North Carolina, Michigan State. I think Oklahoma finally gets the best of Kansas. Third time is the charm, and Oklahoma beats Kansas to get to the national championship. Then you've got North Carolina, Michigan State. A tough game for me to call. Real tough game for me to pick. But we are going to go with North Carolina. North Carolina, Oklahoma, for it all. And for the bracket breakdown. You know what? For the bracket breakdown, we'll go with North Carolina. We will take North Carolina to win it all in the bracket breakdown. I think I like Oklahoma overall to win it all. But for the bracket breakdown, we'll go with a new winner, and we will take North Carolina. Uh, four winners, four different brackets. Uh, first one, Oklahoma. Second one, Nova. Third one, Oregon. And fourth bracket, the bracket breakdown. We've got North Carolina and Marcus Page in a lower scoring game than I had. 68-63, taking down the Sooners. Uh, and Buddy Heald. Buddy Hill drops 30-plus 30, 30 points, but not enough to get it done against North Carolina. Marcus Page answers back with 20-plus points. And Bryce Johnson drops 20. Um as North Carolina wins the national championship. Um, and so that is going to do it for the bracket break it down. This is only bracket number four. I believe we can do 13. I'll continue to look. I'll do an upset crazy bracket coming up. I'll do a bracket picking my favorite teams and see what crazy final four we get with me just picking the teams I like the most. We'll see what kind of wacky bracket that creates. Um, and we'll just do a couple of fun brackets as well as we still got to do a couple more serious brackets. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Drop a like if you did, subscribe if you haven't, and I will catch you all in my next uh, video. Peace out.